What's up guys? So right now, during this weekend, and I guess on the last four days, we have had the double ancient shard, I mean the sacred shard event, and it's been accompanied with 10 acts for the different faction lords, which we have four at this time. And many people were asking from me which one I'm, I'm gonna pull for, and maybe I should have made this video couple days ago already, but I kind of wanted to talk about the faction lords a little bit, because I think um, you don't want to rush and invest on them too hard right now. They might even... some people are like over investing on them, trying to get them, and some people are super black build about them, that they are useless. I think some of the later ones might be better, who knows, we'll talk about it, but I'm not gonna pull on this event. I'll just save my shards for later. Barium has been doing many kinds of unprecedented good shard events and other events this year. I'm sure there will be many good ones. Maybe maybe 2x secrets with 10x Harima or something like that. I'll save my shards for another time. Maybe 1 plus 1 a sacred event. I'm not gonna pull for this. And But it's not that big deal. You can totally pull on this event. I mean the chances of getting that specific champion still isn't that high. and But if you do get one of them, I don't really think you will use any of them right now. And let's actually quickly look at some of them and talk about them a little bit. Paina is actually interesting one because when he was released, I had made video like instantly that, oh my god, he's gonna be super good. But then some other people corrected me that her A2 actually doesn't work as well as I thought, but it had this increasing uh, interesting effect that uh, if the target of this skill is not a champion, resets the cooldown of all of the target skills, this skill's cooldown cannot be decreased. And originally I thought, as some other people did, that this means that she cannot be locked out and she can reset the cooldowns of our ally. That would have made her good even like despite um, even for non-faction allies let's say and overall i would say that like if we don't think about the lord bonuses all of the current faction lords are good none of them are crazy though probably still the best one would of course be aislin and when aislin was originally released people were super scared about him and very hyped because for the obvious reasons that he's in the same faction as Taras and Maritska, and you basically need to have a full team of that faction to make most out of the faction lord bonuses. But actually, what ended up happening is that nobody really used Aislin. There was maybe a couple people that finished top 30 using Aislin on the first couple of weeks after his release, but actually he didn't end up being used pretty much at all in Arena. For obvious reasons, basically zero use in live Arena, because it's practically impossible to get a team, full team of one specific faction. Even if, you, even if there was that many good champions in that faction and you had all of them, chances are that some of them would be banned or picked by the enemy team, or they just wouldn't be good in that matchup. But that kind of makes these faction lords actually pretty hard to use, and I think people need to approach them from a different perspective that they are doing it right now. Some of some of these faction lords, for instance, might not be good for Arena, but maybe they can be super good at Hydra or something else. But I think the most important part about the faction lords, of course, how good their skills are is big deal, and they need to be very good as well to like make it worth using. But the biggest factor actually is that they need to be on the right faction that you can actually build a team around them. And that would mean that you need to have not only three good champions in that faction, but three champions that work well together and work in the same content. So they need to have some strong synergy. And out of the current four existing factions that have a faction lord, 
basically, and of course, we, we can get new champions on these factions and so on, but basically the only one that had some potential, really, was Banner Lords with Taras and Mariska, and maybe you could have slapped in a support, maybe, maybe Rackling or something as the fourth, but there was a little bit more potential here. If we look at the other factions, like ILs for instance, the final actually had some very interesting bonuses on the like the faction ally bonus. Allies deal 25% more damage when attacking out of their active turn, whenever a buff is removed or stolen from an ally, or when it expires, fills their turn meter by 10%. Allies will ignore 5% of target's defense for each buff on them. All of these sound very good if they were universal passive abilities, but because they are restricted that you have to have a team of high elves, it actually it actually makes Fina a complete trash and there's just there's not good enough champions to be used here. Obviously there's no top tier nuker on high elves. And even outside of that, there's Galatir and Arbiter, and both of them are like revivers and supports. You would need a good nuker and some kind of defensive or utility champion to make a team. But that is the issue. You really need to have some synergy and specific champions in that faction to make a team. And yeah, I wouldn't go for any of these right now. Who knows what will happen with them. But the biggest part here that we need to think about, <laughs> if, if you want to think about this in the long term, and like I said, maybe there is a faction Maybe some of you more PvE focused minds, maybe you will instantly now that you think about this, maybe there's a faction that might have potential for a good um, PvE team if we get a good Lord there. And obviously they are consciously trying to make the Lord champions work with the other champions in that faction. So I think there's a good chance that you might find some of those synergies later on. But right now we're basically going in in order that the factions are listed. I don't know if that's gonna be the way that they're doing it like the entire time, but we know that Plarium is pretty, um, uh, I can't say that word, Meticlios, Metic, Meticlos, you know what I mean. They are pretty, um, they have thought about this long time ahead and I'm sure all of the faction lords are already completed and they are just waiting for the right time and order to release them. And I don't have any, I don't have any inside leaks about the factions, uh, the champions and so on, but I'm sure they are already like all done, most likely, because that's how it has been before, based on some other leaks that we had in the past, like famously Harima was leaked like two years before her release, and the kit was the exact same. So, but so here is the future factions where we might get lords. And now you need to think about that: is there some faction with um, some kind of synergy for arena or maybe hydra or some other end game content? If we quickly glance at this, and like I said, I'm not a PVE expert, so I can easily miss things. And maybe some of the new primals will open some options. It, well, if I just got to the chase, the two ones that I'm really looking forward is Undead and Night Revenant. And of course, that's still assuming that the Faction Lord is actually good, but I think those two factions have potential for obvious reasons. But yeah, Lizardmen, right now, I don't think so. There's not too many popular Lizardmen champions. I mean, Lazarus is really the only one used in PvP. As far as for PvE, I mean, Krisk is very popular. But you would need like two more, so... I don't see that happening. Kind of same with the Skinwalkers that... Um, what's his name? I always forget. Oh, Razelwark, he's pretty popular. He sees some use in Fire Knight and Hydra. I think the... Um, I can't recall these champion skills, but I think the Chicken is also some kind of PvE champion. Maybe there's some possibility to 
make a Hydra team or something here with a new faction lord, maybe with Marius, but not something obvious that I clearly can see that there's a potential for a top team here. Okay, then we got orcs, and I think it's kind of the same for orcs. I mean, there really isn't a single orc champion right now that is top of the meta on anything. I mean, Warlord is great, but there's other lockout champions, and if you have him, you're gonna use him, but if you have Krixia or Galatir, you're definitely not gonna be using Warlord as much as you used to. And Garol is decent, but he's not he's not your first choice. He's something that you will use if you have him, and if if he can counter a specific enemy team, like for instance he does AoE A1, so he isn't too battered if the enemy team has a lot of lockouts, but he also isn't very tanky and so on. But definitely there isn't enough options to make a full team for the faction lord bonus. Okay, let's skip a couple factions. Let's actually see a good faction. So Knight Revenant has very high potential for obvious reason. First of all, we have a duo here. That, that's, by the way, that's clearly the team that Banner Lords, Knight Revenant and Undead all have in common. They have a strong duo, so there's much higher possibility that you could make a good team there with, uh, with the Faction Lord bonus. But obviously we got Narses and Angora. Both of them are super popular right now, both in Classic Arena and Live Arena. They even get some use in Classic Arena defense if you have a fast team and you have like a lockout or Armands or maybe both of them. And then you also have Narses and Angora. Some very fast people are finishing with those kind of defense teams, even in like top 20 or even like top 10 or whatever. And of course, they are the most used champions in Classic Arena offense. But apart from those two, <laughs> we have Krixia, who might be the single best champion in the game, or definitely top three best champions in the game. Those, those three are instantly a team that you can make work, both in Classic Arena and Live Arena, both defense and offense. They are universally so strong that um, I think this this faction has the highest potential that even if the Lord isn't better than the other Lords, but because the other champions are so good that there's a good potential here. And who knows, maybe maybe the couple of first faction Lords weren't a hit and people are not using them. So maybe they will beef them up later. And <laughs> if they had a really strong here, then I guarantee you that this is going to be the the best faction with Faction Lord. And outside of those champions, I don't think there's some potential for PV here. I, I guess we have the Rathalos Blade Master, but... Um, and, oh wait, actually, Double Kalvalax has seen some cheese use in dungeons and speedruns. Maybe there's even potential for, for a PV team here, now that I think about it. You, you have Tomb Lord, you have Kalvalax, yeah, the seven Narma, who knows? To be honest, I changed my mind. Knight Revenant Faction Lord could, could go either way. It could be good PvE champion or it could be a good PvP one. Because you could make teams for both. And for PvP, apart for the from the White Duo and Grixia, Georgit and Hegemon could also be potentially used. So there's actually five different champions that could could make a team with the faction lord depending what kind of skills it it does and what it synergizes with but this is the one that i'm waiting for that i i might <laughs> pull if there's events for this maybe i'll even open prism shards for it if it's a really good one but only if it's a really really insanely good one that plarium plarium baits me to buy shards unlikely but i will um I will leave that room unlocked <laughs> in in the case that something like that happens. And obviously my most wanted champion in the game is Krixia. So if the stars align, I will definitely want to pull a Krixia and get a good faction lord here. Okay, then we got Dark Elves. I think this faction also has kind of low 
low possibility for that kind of synergy. There is a couple different individual champions that see some use, like Astralit gets used with uh, uh, VCR or Tuharak in bomb spread teams in classic arena offense. Guin Eva seems some sees some minor use in live arena, but she isn't tanky and doesn't really offer a lot of utility. Lydia gets used in a lot of PvE content, but also in classic ar arena offense, kind of depending on the meta, but right now with the white duo, Lydia is very popular. And yeah, there's some like odd ones out, like Mitrala, Fatalos Blade Master, Ghostborn. All of those get a little bit used, but none of them are really like uh, meta defining and you don't use them together, so I don't think there's a high possibility for that faction. But then we get to the Undead, and the obvious one here is that you have both Sifi and Rotos, and Sifi is, I would say, the best reviver in this game. I guess you can maybe debate that a little bit with Galatir, but they kind of do a little bit different roles, and Sifi's revive with uh, turn meter kind of makes him a more potent one as a reviver. Even though you could argue that Galatir is probably the best champion in the game, it's gonna be either Galatir or Crixia, but Sifi, Sifi could even be debated to be honest. So, But these two are very good. Rodos isn't super meta right now in Classic Arena because Harima and UDK and so on. But maybe there would be a faction lord bonus that might be able to deal with UDK or some other way. Maybe a faction lord could ignore enemy passives if you have three undeads. And maybe there's some other mechanic. Maybe we can get a new blessing or something like that. If there's just some way to counter UDK and Harima passives, and because they are both passives, there's a good chance that the, something that would counter one of them would also counter the other one. So if you could counter them, Rodos could make a comeback in... And <laughs> by comeback I mean that Rodos is great right now, but he could be top tier, meta-defining again. And outside of these two, you would need one more, but there's, there's the obvious one, UDK, one of the most popular champions right now in classic arena defense, but also, very potent in offense if if enemy is using something like UDK and very popular in live arena as well. Just in general to counter single target nukers like Rotos and Wukong, but even something like Sifi A1. And it's also just great for, the, for your own Wukong to proc the passive and keep it alive. And outside of those three that are the clear number one choices, but Badel, um, Necret, those could have some potential use for PvP on certain situations, so I wouldn't rule them out. As far as Calamitus goes, I think he's some kind of <laughs> PvE champion. I kind of, um, I think he's like good for Hydra, and I have this tendency that I have like you know those blindfolds that the racetrack horses have? I have those on and when there's a PvE champion, it's about my pay grade and I don't do hundreds of trillions of Hydra damage, so I kind of tune out. But I know he's good for PvE or Hydra. And obviously, CV is great at everything. Even Badel seems see some use on Hydra because of his passive. So it's actually totally possible that you could even have a good PV team with the Faction Lord bonus here. Because like I said, it isn't just about the Faction Lord, how good skills he has, but you need to have three champions other than him from the same faction, and they need to have skills that work together in a team for a specific purpose. So that's why I'm saying that I'm thinking about the PvE team and PvP team for these different factions. And then what do we have left? <laughs> okay, on Demon Spawn, it's a little bit out of the season. Duchess is kind of hard countered by Narsus A2, ignoring passives. And 
the other ones too, like Initve, Helicat, Kaimar, none of these are super meta right now. There's a bunch of individual champions that has seen some use in the past, so I wouldn't completely rule it out. Maybe if there was some insane faction lord, maybe you could make a PvP team out of this, but I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, hold my hopes up for Demon Spawn. Okay, three more. So the Ondars. Kind of similar, maybe a little bit higher potential here, because uh, there's obviously kind of um, in the same way that there's a bunch of champions that do get used a little bit. None of them are insanely meta-defining, but they are actually pretty good. I mean, for PvE, we have two great nukers, Gnut and Acrisia. Obviously, those get used a lot in PvE. Brogni does get used a little bit. Not as much as before, but those champions have potential for PvE. Even Mauli is kind of cute because she can taunt the Hydra heads and she feels the turn meter of your team with her passive and is a reviver. So I wouldn't even rule out a possibility of Darth um, Hydra team or some other kind of PvE team. Like that, that totally could happen. I can see that happening. And of course, we have Tranda, so. There is that. You have three strong nukers. Maybe if there was some some kind of uh, like Knut, Akrisia and Tranda, I, I didn't mean Tormin. Maybe there's some kind of passive ability that would increase your team damage. Maybe you would use all three of them or maybe two out of those three, depending on the boss or the content. Maybe there's a possibility for a top tier meta defining game-breaking Hydra team or something like that. I could see that totally happening. Now, outside of that, Tormin gets a little bit used in Live Arena, not much. Joffred, I would say, is actually pretty good in Live Arena. One of the one of the underrated champions for PV, PvP. I probably... I need to make a video about the most underrated champions for Live Arena, but Joffred probably would be rank 1 on that list. He's actually an insane champion, but he's good for PvP. Tormin sometimes almost okay. I don't think there's the ingredients for a PvP team here, but maybe maybe a PvE team. Frony is okay, but he's not, he's not the primal uh, champion that you want to pull and you're gonna be disappointed if you get him instead of Grixia. Even though there's, of course, worse primals to get. Okay, Shadow King is an interesting one. There's a bunch of great supports here. And we kind of need a faction lord Nuger, actually, is what I'm feeling. But you have Yumeko and Shu Chen. Both of them are incredibly popular in both PvE and PvP content. I mean, you use both of them in the Tranda team for Hydra. And you also use both of them in speed teams in classic arena offense and basically you just need one more champion plus the faction lord for a team so there's a very very high possibility to make a team here we also got mikage also she is good in both pve and pvp and same with harima good she also gets used in hydra and obviously one of the best champions in the game for pvp there's so many options here. Even Ninja is kind of okay. Lady Kimi as well for PvE. I think there's a good possibility that you could make a um, Shadow King team. So this is one that I would I would look out for as well. But as you can see, Arima, Yumeko, Shuchen, I don't have any of those champions. So probably not a team for me, but if they make an insane faction lord here. <laughs> Probably some other people will will definitely use it and I will hate the champion. And okay, so the last faction, Sylvan Watchers. I don't see it. I mean, there's basically a bunch of supports and no Nuger here. And the supports are okay, but there's nothing nothing meta-defining. Like Eostrid 
uh, Glysad, Padraig, Emic, all of them are good, but not like uh, not the best champions. It's not like Chu Chen or Tranda for Hydra or something like that. And our base is good for PvP, but not not the best one. Something that I would definitely use though, but maybe maybe there's po potential for a PvE team here, but you would have to have an incredibly strong nuker that is pretty much the only nuker in your team or something like that. Even the white Dryad Naya could be good on Hydra. Yeah, I, I would put this faction as a low maybe, that there's some potential, of course, there's a couple good champions and if they release some new ones, that could totally happen to any faction of course, but I don't seem I don't deem this champion as the one with the highest potential. But yeah, that's that's basically <laughs> I kinda wanted to go through all of them. I, that's why I didn't want to go through the, the skills of all the current faction lord champions, because I knew that it was gonna take a little bit time and I wanted to go through all of the factions. But basically, as you can see, the point in nutshell on my video is that right now none of them are being used. I would be shocked, honestly, if none of the faction lords ended up being meta, because they are clearly making them very strong on purpose. But right now, the existing ones hit didn't hit the mark, they missed the mark. But there's so many factions left, and no Implarium, they might make the, uh, the latter ones extra strong, just because the first few ones weren't being used, so I wouldn't rule it out. I think almost certainly one of the faction lords is gonna be insanely meta, and probably, probably the top ones that I will point out from the future ones would be Night Revenant, Undead, maybe Shadow King and Jars. I think th those are the ones that I see could make an insane team. And if we go by the team order, it's gonna take a while until we get there because those are gonna be the final factions. But yeah, that's a long way to say that I'm not gonna pull any shards today. Not that I'm gonna save all of my massive amount of 11 sacreds to the to the whatever undead faction lord summoning event in three years i'm not gonna do that but maybe i'll pull in one plus one sacred or whatever but yeah any questions or comments put them down below maybe i missed out something point it out in the comments i will definitely highlight it if somebody with keen mind comes up with something that I missed, which is almost certain, because like I said, I'm not a PvE god, I'm not claiming to be one, only for PvP. Anyway, that's it for this video, have a nice day and see ya.